All right, so I'm going to walk you guys through this. I'll walk you through it as we go. This is a, th- these are two very good teams. Th- if you want to watch a good match, um, send Lori a, an email, and I'll get you a link to this match. This is a Nationals match. I believe it's four or five. Very smart players on both sides. Uh, you have just, just really good play. Um, so you got a nice deep serve here, kind of nice, uh, a little bit short on the return, but, but hard. And then you have, now this is where the tension starts, right? The, the dance between the serve and the return. Uh, they're trying to, the, the white and red team on this side are trying to solve the, solve the initial part of the game, which is getting up to the uh, NVZ. Now it's when they finally get the shot. The lady in white gets the shot that she wants. And now they start coming up, right? But they're super calm. Look at that movement together, right? Split step. Nice, right? Gets down low. Boom. Beautiful shot there. Gets up, right? Now they're up. Now we're at a neutral neutral uh, rally. This is what we're talking about. This is If you get to this this, this stage of, the, of the, the rally, you're getting into the meat of the matter. So here, you're going to see uh, a, a dink that goes a little bit high, and then White decides, okay, let me go. And she does, and we're going to look at some more of these, but she does a, a nice body shot here, right? Attacking her opponent. And then and this rally, we're focusing on movement, but that's a, a good shot to have, which we'll look at in a second. The, the shot comes off kind of weird, but, you know, super effective. Look at the movement here, right? So I have red going to get it. Look at white move. This is what we talked about with that, that uh, elastic tether. White's moving with red. Not exactly the same, but moving to the middle, right? Because red's off the court. So white's really the only player left. White basically has to play singles right now. Um, now, the, the, the red here takes a, a – hits a jam shot. Now, this is what we talked about earlier, too. You're, she's in trouble. Red's clearly in trouble here, right, the way she's moving. So when she gets to this ball, what she decides to do, and I can tell you personally, I've done this successfully many times in, in tournament play and rec play too. But um, basically she just throw this, throws this ball at her opponent in, into the body, right? And jams her opponent. And then that allows uh, um, white to basically get set up. Red's going to come back on the court. This is the shot of the, of the rally right here. This shot right here. It's such a beautiful shot by the player in white, rec- recognizing that the player over here, is 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 has not recovered from the the last shot this player is over here so all of this all of this court's open over here this player recognizes the open space and then hits this beautiful little dink over here stressing the other team now if you if you remember what did white do when red got stressed white came to the middle okay the her opponent does not go to the middle her opponent basically stays and keeps her position. That is what opens up that gap that CJ talked about earlier. So a gap gets open between the two players, right? She moves a little bit there, but not enough, and it's too late. Now the player in white, again, savvy player, she's not going to hit it hard. She's just going to drop it in there, and that's what ends the rally. So there, what you're seeing is you're seeing movement, um, you know, how moving a player around and, you know, by, by the white player, and a lot of times the pickleball players, I want to note one thing. We look at this shot and we say nice shot. And there's nothing wrong with that shot. That's a fine shot. Yep. But the nice shot is this one. That's the masterful shot right there, right? This is just finishing. What I tell uh, partners of mine when I have, if my partner hits a shot like the one before that I said was a masterful shot and I put it away, I always say I had the don't mess it up shot. Basically, it's a shot that, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to put it away, but I better not mess it up. My partner did all the work, right? All the heavy lifting by hitting the really nice shot that then set up my put away. But it wasn't my put away that was the the key to the rally. The key to the rally was the shot that sets up the put away. Anything on this rally, CJ, that, that jumped out to you? Yeah, let's go back to, let's talk about that shot where she jammed her up, where the gal in the red um, jammed up the, the gal across the net. Let's go back there. Right so this shot here. right here. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So couple of things that you can do. So Tony talked about the, the jam shot, right? I tend to, I tend to favor, I like, I like to dump a dink. So for me, I like to take from here and I like to dump a dink back to the back foot of the player in the white. Okay. So you, the, would go, you would go here. I would my go arrows? here. Right. I would go there with a, try and do that with a fairly soft shot. Now I'm going to, we all know that when you're hitting a shot on the run, it's, it's, it's more challenging to do, right? When I'm hitting a shot on the run, and I practice these a lot, when I'm hitting that shot on the run, one of the technical things that I think about is, what goes in my mind is soft, soft, soft. I soften my grip <laughs> pressure, right? 
And I just try and make everything in the motion soft because my momentum of my legs and my lower body is transferring to the ball and the paddle. Okay. So I like to dump that dink. Now I think one of the, um, I think one of the things that you can also do, and Tony and I talked about this a little earlier when we were just kind of going through some of these rallies, is he talked about taking that dink across the middle of the net. So Tony, why don't you talk about, instead of just the dump dink, which again, takes a little practice, sure. what about taking a dink across the middle of the net if you're not comfortable with that jam shot? And let me try something here. What, what, what CJ is talking about is she's talking about basically dumping the ball, obviously not on the out of bounds, but like in this zone here, um, and that's a, a fine shot. Uh, the, the risk that I see with that shot is if you float it a little bit, what ends up happening is this area here, let me see if I can do this right. This area kind of in here is open because the player in red is off the court. So it allows this player to basically just poke the ball, which if you recall is what the player in white did, uh, late does later on in the rally is basically she goes at the um she goes at the uh in the opening that gets gets established here mm -hmm. when the ball comes down the line to her what i tend to like you know the more that i think about the game and the more that i study things is i like the ball here um some people like to hit the ball all the way across here the risk with the ball coming all the way across there here based on on my sort of analysis and, and thinking of angles and things like that is that this player the ball has to cross the plane of this player in the, in the green, <coughs> excuse me. So what can happen is uh, if, if that ball gets floated, this player is, is moved, this player has moved over here, right? That opens up an attack down this zone here. So that's, that's what, what concerns me about that. I think the, the shot in this zone here, the one that I left standing has the benefit of, of usually if you're playing a right hand or it goes to this player's backhand, it, it is, it can be attacked by this player, perhaps the player that's directly across from you, but usually they're leaning towards you a little bit, you know? So I like the, I like the dump off into this spot here. So, or a lob. I like a lob there too. I'm a bit, okay. I, I know that the, the, I'm a big fan of the defensive lob there. I know a lot of players don't like it, but I love the little flick lob there. But. I got to tell you. So in, 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 in the lob to me as well, especially playing women right? You know, Tony's six feet tall. I'm only five feet eight. So if Tony was standing where the gal in the green shirt is standing, I don't know that I'm going to throw up a lob <laughs> right. because, because if I miss it, it's going right into his overhand and he's going to cremate my partner. But I've already seen the gals in the greens overhead. And it, it when she was moving backward, it wasn't the best overhead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and the gal, it looks to me like the gal on the other side of court is a little shorter. So I might try that lob up and over the two of them. And I'm trying to hit it to the back corner of the even, of the even box. That would be from where the girl in the red is all the way back over to that even box. It gives me the most amount of, are you going, uh, are you going here? Space. Yeah. Even, well, yeah, but to right, right towards the baseline. Gotcha. If you took, yeah, if you took that towards the baseline, that's where I would be going. It's kind of like almost in between the two of them from where the gal in the red is. I'm going to do mine in yellow. I would do mine here. Okay. More towards the baseline there. But, and the reason I would is, let me do it a little better. The reason I would is because I'm going to, the key is I have to get over this player's forehand, right? But as, as long as I get it, if I'm elevating it up into this area here, right? It's going to be really hard for this player to, to hit an overhead. And then once it's dropping here, I don't mind this player going back and hitting it with the backhand. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, and so I like, I, I do agree. You obviously have more, uh, you have more space if you go towards the blue dot than the yellow dot. Uh, but usually where I'm aiming for is the yellow dot is my kind of my go-to spot from here to get it. I'm trying to get it either behind them or on the op, the player across diagonally backhand normally. So. Yep. Exactly. Because um, you're either on somebody's backhand or you hopefully you've gotten it past the player at the net and you're on somebody's backhand. Right? Right, right. So she has to come up with a high backhand volley. Not an easy shot. And I think the key here, though, CJ, is whichever one of these strategies that is best for you, you know, because some players have you know, like Mills Miller is the best from what I, you know, he's probably one of the best straight on dinkers in the game. So he can dink that dump dink for him is like no big deal. Right. For other players, maybe they're more comfortable with a cross-court dink or a middle dink. The key is to have some technique that you're comfortable with, 
that you feel that you can execute with reasonable, uh, 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 you know, reasonable confidence uh, and, and that you're, you're ready for it before the shot gets hit. Because once the shot gets this, the lady in the red, she has her technique down, right? She, she's not hitting this. You know, we talked before about like accidental shots. This is not an accidental shot, folks. She did not accidentally flick that ball into the other person's chest by, you know, just by, by accident. So there was an intentional thing that she was trying to accomplish. And obviously it worked out for her. So, yep. Anything else, CJ, on this rally? If not, we're going to jump over uh, to the Ooh. next topic. Let's go. Let's keep going. All right. So what we're going to do, CJ, is I'm just going to jump uh, in the interest of time. I'm going to jump into the next set of, of rallies. What we're going to look at is the body flick shot here. This yep. is a really interesting um, strategy. So movement is fundamental, right? Movement is you got to have good movement in everything you do in, when you play pickleball. You know, when you're moving back, front, side to side, movement is super critical. I always tell people, I would rather play with somebody who, who's in the right spot and has a uh, not the best shot than someone who has the best shot and is in the wrong spot. Because if you're in the wrong spot, I don't care how good your shots are. You can't execute them because you're not, hit, you know, you're not in the right place. So being in the right place is, is, is fundamental. And, and the other way that kind of basic way I think about it is I'm playing on a pickleball court, right? So th like my body connects to the court with my feet, right? So if my 